seven cars that became stupidly expensive. Like everything, car values have boom and bust cycles. Just 10 years ago, you could get an old Lamborghini for not much more than £40,000. If you want to own an important piece of motoring history, a car with racing heritage or a rare special model, you should pay extra for the privilege. However, some cars produced in large numbers have still managed to become insanely expensive. Let's get right into the video. Number 1. Volkswagen T1 the T1 phenomenon is a perfect example of an ordinary, slow, and pretty much useless vehicle becoming an expensive item overnight. Volkswagen produced T1 buses, pickups, and vans from 1947 through to 1967 and made millions of them. Commonly known as the hippie van, the T1 was a cheap and versatile utility vehicle which led a hard life as a delivery truck or a minibus. Powered by a 1.5-litre flat-four engine, the T1 only has 42 horsepower, making it painfully slow, but durable and economical. By all means, this model should be forgotten about, since Volkswagen moved on as a company and the market invented minivans and proper pickup trucks. But somehow, its popularity skyrocketed since the early 2000s. The most sought-after version, the rare Samba minibus, recently fetched $198,000 at auction. Even the much more common models in good condition can reach $50,000. Number 2. BMW M3 E30 in 1985, the motoring world witnessed the birth of a performance legend, the BMW M3. The car was based on a regular E33 series but featured numerous upgrades, different body panels, revised suspension, and a high-revving 2.3-litre four-cylinder engine with 195 horsepower in the early model and 238 in later versions. The E30 M3 soon became a racing legend in the world's touring car championships winning practically every championship it entered and securing its place in motoring history. In the early 90s, however, it was replaced by a more mature and faster E36 M3 and was soon forgotten about. As the values went down, the E30s were being bought up by Ricers, with some terrible modifications being done. Not so long ago, you could buy a decent E30 M3 for as little as £8,000 or dollars. Thanks to the classic car boom and the realization of its nimble handling, rev-happy engine, and beautifully analog driving dynamics, the prices started to rise. Today, nice examples are around £40,000, and if you're looking for a rare sports evolution model, be prepared to pay close to £90,000, a rather large sum for a car that could be beaten by a modern diesel hatchback. Number 3. Ford Sierra RS Cosworth Introduced in 1986 and produced until 1989, the RS Cosworth was a proper blue-collar sports car. Built on the three-door Sierra platform with rear-wheel drive, the Cosi featured a 2-litre turbocharged four-cylinder with 204 to 224 horsepower on tap. With a big spoiler, a totally 80s body kit, and powerful engine with lots of turbo lag, the RS Cosworths were a proper handful to drive. Built as a homologation special for rally racing, the Cosworth wasn't that successful on the track, but it remained a favorite as a boy racer model throughout the 90s. For years, the prices of RS Cosworths were below £10,000, but if you want one now, hard luck has to buy an RS Cosworth in decent condition. You're going to have to fork out more than £30,000. For rarer RS Cosworth 500 models, it's going to cost you more than 50000 For you Americans out there, you're going to have to sit this one out. They didn't bother importing it for some reason. Number 4. Porsche 911 Riding on top of the wave of insane prices is the Porsche 911. Practically all classic models from the early 60s to late 90s have experienced a massive price rise which has turned them from affordable classics to high-priced collector's cars. Strangely, Porsche has produced more than a million 911s over the years, so the cars are fairly abundant. The early models are nice to look at, but of course, very slow, noisy, and rust-prone. These days, you can get a three-year-old 911 but the same as a tatty classic of the late 70s and early 80s. Of course, the internet has spread the joys of the air-cooled Porsche, but they also had dream car status for the kids back then, some of which are now wealthy adults. What would you rather have, a 10-year-old Porsche or a 40-year-old Porsche? Number 5. Lancia Delta HF Integral Notoriously unreliable but amazingly handsome, the Delta HF Integral was arguably the biggest rally legend of the 90s, winning numerous championships. In its road-going form, it was a very capable hot hatch with a 2-litre turbocharged engine and perfectly balanced all-wheel drive. 
Italian build quality and the high-strung nature of the car meant it was expensive and complicated to maintain, and it also had rust issues. Lancia produced over 40,000 Delta Integrals from 1986 to 1994, which meant there were a lot of them around. In the early 2000s, decent examples of this 200-horsepower hot hatch could be bought for as little as £4,000. Today, the situation is quite different, with solid examples changing hands for £30,000. Top-of-the-line models can go for an astronomical £50,000, but don't be fooled, the HF Integral is still as unreliable as ever, but for new owners, it's likely a long-term investment rather than a daily driver. Number 6. Ferrari 308 GTB Everyone thinks Ferraris are expensive, and these days they're probably right. That hasn't always been the case, however. The Ferrari 308 from the late 70s and early 80s was, for a while, the cheapest way of owning a proper Ferrari. For years, this model hovered around the £20,000 mark, making it actually fairly affordable. The compact sports car offered pretty analogue driving experience and sharp handling, although hardly groundbreaking performance, with a 0-60 of 7.5 seconds. The 308 was, however, a proper Ferrari, and for just 20 grand, it offered a ticket to the exclusive Ferrari Owners Club. In 2017, those days are gone, I'm afraid, and today, a decent 308 GTB costs 60k or more. Some later versions fetch even higher prices, and experts say that those models could even reach six figures before long. Doesn't that seem like a pretty crazy figure for a slow Ferrari, especially one that they made over 12,000 of? Number 7. Mercedes SL Pagoda It is understandable that a Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing costs half a million dollars, since it is a fantastically rare piece of racing history with unique features and gorgeous design. How, you might ask, does that explain the Mercedes 280 SL, which now costs over £110,000? With modest performance, no racing history and a lofty production number of 40,000 examples, it seems hard to fathom why this classic is now so expensive. The Pagoda generation of the Mercedes SL was sold from 1963 to 1971 and featured six-cylinder engines with a removable hardtop. It was a comfy cruiser with decent driving characteristics, but hardly a performance machine. Smaller and slower than the later R107 SL model, the Pagoda was around £15,000 in the early 2000s, which seemed appropriate. In just a few years, however, the prices for nice examples have risen to the £50,000 mark, with top-of-the-line models now trading for well over 100000 So there you are. Which cars did I miss? Would you buy a classic or a newer car? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers!